Welcome to Trip Notes. It's a New Zealand Herald travel podcast brought to you by House of Travel Better Together. And the latest episode for you, if you are a foodie, do not go anywhere because our special guest, Gareth Stewart, he's the executive chef for the Nourish Group. They have 13 restaurants around New Zealand and some of these restaurants, Euro, Jervois Steakhouse, The Crab Shack, Seoul, The Chamberlain, The Brit, which is a brand new pub in Auckland and Britama, which is absolutely amazing. Plus, he happens to originate from our destination of the week. Uh, we'll get to that in just a moment, but let's welcome Gareth Stewart and New Zealand Herald Deputy Editor Stephanie Holmes. Hi, Tim. Thank you. And Gareth, thanks for joining us. Hi, how are you doing? I'm very good. I'm very excited about this episode because food and travel are my favourite things, so combining them together is very exciting <laughs> for me. And just a little word to the listeners, don't listen if you're hungry because we're going to be talking a lot about food. Great. Maybe yeah. take a pause, go and get a snack, come yeah. back. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I should have brought some with me. Oh, I, I know, actually. Food. What was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You've brought tissues uh, for, <laughs> for a cold, but, uh, but no food. That's fine. Um, I always do a little tease for our destination of the week, which we'll get to at the end of the episode. Um, so this place is roughly the size of the South Island in New Zealand, actually a little bit smaller. Its highest mountain is only 978 metres, so, so wow. not many mountains at all, but... 55 million people and some of the most spectacular history in the world. So that's a, that's a bit of a clue. Wow. Um, and, and for our travel bug section, which is in the middle of the podcast, we will be looking at FOMO to do with food. Yeah, it's a, it's a massive problem for me. So yes. yeah, I'm looking forward to talking about that and getting some expert advice, hopefully. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no yeah. pressure. <laughs> FOMO for, for food when you're traveling specifically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but let's begin to find out a little bit about you and, and, yeah. and your travels. Yeah. All right. So um, you obviously grew up in the UK. Yes, what, what came part? from a little city um, right at the bottom of the of the south coast, so yeah. uh, Portsmouth. Yeah, um, it's a funny little place, Portsmouth. Yeah. If you're from there, I think uh, you spend all your time trying to get out of it. But <laughs> but a lot of uh, travellers and a lot of tourists love it. There's so much history involved in Portsmouth. Yeah, um, just with uh, um, the naval, it's a very naval city. Um, but I, I went to London as soon as I could. So I was 18 and moved to London yeah. and spent my adult growing up time there. So um, it was good, It was good, London. I met so many people from all over the world. Uh, and it's such it just, an international destination, isn't it? It is, you know, and my eyes just popped. I was meeting up with Germans, French, uh, Africans, you know, and so to, to have that kind of, um, I don't know, touching with those people, it just, opens up so much more and that's how I met Kiwis and mm. eventually, eventually got here. Yeah, so when did you move out to New Zealand? Uh, was it 2007? Okay. So, yes. Yeah, so and had you been time. here before you moved? Or? No, never. Whoa. So I applied for the job to, to get here and uh, got flown over um, for a trial week uh, and it was my first time travelling that far from, from, from London. Yeah. Um, I mean, to get on two planes and spend 24 hours travelling is quite some, some feat. Yeah. Um, and I remember getting to Auckland and just, I, I don't know what I expected, actually, when I first got here. But I remember being taken to uh, was it Bethel's Beach mm -hmm. and I was just blown away. Uh, it's such a beautiful place here. Yeah. Um, and what were your kind of other first impressions of when you first moved here? Like after you'd been here a couple of weeks, uh, what really stood out to you? Well, I just jumped straight into work that time. So I remember looking at my hotel bedroom um, during my trial and looking at the architecture and thinking, it's just not cool enough. <laughs> you know, being, being in London and seeing all that history and architecture, I was really disappointed that uh, the, a lot of the buildings were, you know, from the 60s, 70s mm. here. So I was, yeah, I was kind of wanted a bit more. It's yeah. hard. It's, it is hard for people. If you've come yeah. from a big city like London, coming to anywhere in New Zealand, even, you know, even Auckland, it, it takes a little while to adjust. Mm. We also knocked down a lot of buildings know, in the 80s. Yeah. Shame. Um, but, but have you found things have got gotten better? Because I feel like the CBD in Auckland and, and you know, some of the places mm. that you work mm. have actually really helped make it so much better than it was oh, when you moved here. A hundred percent. Auckland is a, is a really cool city now. I think I think it was the last, <laughs> the, last the, the, the last eight years it's really lifted its game. Uh, I mean, I've just travelled recently. I've, I've been to um, Vancouver, back to London. I was in Italy. Um, you know, Australia, I've been quite a few times, Sydney and Melbourne. And I think we're comparable to those cities now. You know, I think we've got a lot to offer, mm. certainly within the food industry. Uh, our food scene is, is really lifted up um, and it's just a lot to do. We just need to, uh, I think, top up the population to, to actually sustain what we have here now. Yeah. 
And when you travel around New Zealand, do you have any favourite spots you like to go to? Oh, yeah, yeah, I've got my favourite place in the world is Kowal. Island. Oh, it's beautiful yeah, there. We go there every year. I'm lucky enough to have a friend who has a batch right on the beach. So we'll go over there and spend uh, four or five days. Did you become friends with them before you knew they had the batch? Or <laughs> yeah. what, what, what was the time Now he's my best friend. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah, the West. So um, they've had the, had the batch in their, in their uh, family for years. Yeah. And it's a type of place where you just, your shoes are off, your watch is off, your phone's off, and um, you just relax, you know, and do stuff without television. Uh, you, you, you kind of plug your phone in now and again just to make sure the world's still alive, but uh, the rest of the time you just completely slow down. So. Mm. Because you've great. got a couple of kids, a couple of young boys. and um, Yes, so, Harley and Freddie, yeah, nine and six, yeah. Travel must have changed a little bit for you since oh, the boys came along. I highly recommend travelling without the kids, you know. <laughs> Just leave them in the car or open a window, I don't know. Put a Fanta. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah it, it does change everything. You, you know, when you just used to jump on a plane and... Uh, plug yourself in, have a few wines. There's no none of that anymore. You've no. got to slow down. I mean, traveling through London with my kids just recently was uh, frustrating because you, I'm used to, you're in London mode. Yeah. You jump on a tube, you jump on the next one, you're getting off, you're getting on a bus, you're, you're constantly on the go. And now I have to stop every few minutes to get them to catch up. Yeah. Come on, boys, come on. You're, <laughs> you're making us look like bloody tourists. <laughs> are they good travelers? They are. Yeah. They are. They've been, they were so good. Yeah, really good. They loved it. I mean, on the tube, they, they spent their time doing this because it was just too noisy. It was so new to them. Yeah. That, that many people um, was really new to them. You know, in, in uh, I don't know how many in Auckland, was it two, uh, is it a million? It's like 1.6. 1.6. Yeah. 1. We're getting close to 2 million now. Yeah, and going to London where there's 8, eight mil. So it was a, a massive jump, but they did really well. Mm. Really proud. What, yeah. what age can kids start to be, you know, genuinely interested in things that cost a bit of money to show them? You know, as in, I can remember my little nephew when he was like three, we took him to the zoo. Mm. He was most interested in like a random chicken and, <laughs> and the map. You know, he just, he just loved the map. It was like, yeah. so, so the rhino, no, forget the rhino. It's, it's, yeah. the, it's the chicken. I think, yeah, eight, seven or eight, isn't it? Okay. I think that my kids just start to see <laughs> what money is and cool stuff. And, mm. and now they're just, not obsessed with it but it's what they can do for two dollars is that worth two dollars dad <laughs> no it's not it's your bloody job get on with it yeah, into the dishwasher <laughs> yeah. you yeah. can't do much for two dollars can you no. <laughs> let's not tell them that no. <laughs> and, and then what about um the other travel that you did when you i mean you talk about your, your time in england but mm. um did you explore much of europe when, yeah. when you were over there it's funny you do take europe for granted when you're living there and so i left when i was 26 uh, and being a chef, I didn't really have that much time traveling. I kind of left it really late because I was always working. I'm glad I put the hard work in it when I did, but um, I did manage to do a lot of Europe, a lot of Europe, some of Europe. I did Greece. Uh, Greece is one of those places, just it's beautiful. Yeah. I didn't get to Santorini, but I did Kefalonia, Corfu, and Zanti. Um, a beautiful islands. Uh, the food was kind of geared up though for tourists, uh, which was a bit of a shame. You do, if you do go, you have to go off the beaten track. Mm. You have to go down to those little villages and the food becomes more simple, but they have the best produce. You know, the best tomatoes I've ever tried yeah. in Greece. Um, so I was lucky enough to do Greece, a little bit of France, um, did Spain, uh, just the south, south uh, sorry, North Spain, Bilbao. Uh, Amsterdam, everyone does Amsterdam, and, and it's a really cool city. You're allowed to smoke cannabis, which <laughs> was great, a bit controversial. Um, we did Prague. Was that with the kids? Yeah, yeah, the kids. <laughs> kids, come on. Um, no, Prague. Prague was great. Uh, it was freezing cold, but beautiful. Mm. Um, absolutely beautiful. Um, and lucky enough to go to Jamaica, so I'm half Jamaican, so... I managed to get a couple of tickets for me and my brother to go over to Jamaica. Uh, I was about 21. Realised once I got there that I got the ticket so cheap because it was hurricane season. Oh no! <laughs> so Hurricane Ivan came three days into our holiday and wrecked the place, oh, which no. was a bit disappointing. But we did manage to experience true Jamaica. We had no electricity, no running water for um, for over a week. So having to shower in cold rainwater every day was was an eye opener because that's how a lot of Jamaicans actually lived. Yeah. There's so much poverty there, you know. So um, and it forced us to talk to each other. Mm. We're stuck in a room. We 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 did manage to get cold red stripe from the village <laughs> that we'd bring back up and um, and you'd you'd put into ice um, and it was it was just an amazing experience. Yeah, really really cool. 
you still have family living there? I do, yeah. yeah. I've got uh, uncles and aunties, uh, cousins. Um, we've got a, a massive family, some of which I haven't met. Um, some of them I did meet when I was there. The, the, one of the, the most amazing experiences I had was meeting cousins that I didn't even know existed, uh, climbing onto the back of a truck, an open truck, so we are just holding on to the side. And, we, and they took us to a, a village right out in the, in the sticks. Um, I was really gutted I didn't bring my, uh, my camera, but it's, it's all up here, you know, it was, and I think there's something beautiful or romantic about that as well. <laughs> but, um, you know, there was a, a, a river um, just running through, with people washing their clothes in the river and, and bathing and, you know, with the kid, and it was just magical. Mm. Um, yes, there was a lot of poverty, but it was just, it's, I, I opened up my heart to true Jamaica. Mm. What about Jamaican food? Oh, it's, it's, it's my number one. Yeah, my, uh, my grandmother's uh, curry goat, rice oh, and yum. peas, ackee and saltfish, which is, ackee is a, a fruit in, in Jamaica. Uh, we get it over here tinned. And when I can get saltfish, I buy it. And um, that's my, my brunch on a Sunday. Because no one else likes it in my family, which okay. is which is great for me. It means yeah. I can eat all the, the whole lot, and it's spicy. Um, I've I've learned to put hot sauce all over your food, then you don't have to share it with your kids. <laughs> That's a good tip. Yeah, the, the chicken in Jamaica. Like, I, I was in Belize, and there was a Jamaican guy who had a restaurant um, on a little island and a little key, you know, in Belize. And he was about 200 kilos, one of the biggest people I've ever seen in my life. And he did barbecue chicken. Mm. And just each bite, you just had to announce to the table, this is the most ridiculously tasty chicken I've had in my life. And then the next bite, I'm sorry, everyone, I don't think you appreciate how good this, this chicken is. <laughs> it, it's good. Is it a similar thing? Or is there some sort of secret to make yeah, that chicken jerk, so jerk good? chicken, yeah. yeah. So, and it's, it's about the barbecue. Um, it's about the smoke from the barbecue and, and that right. flavor of the marinade of jerk spice. Uh, which has, you know, cloves, garlic, scotch bonnet, um, soy, Worcester. It's got loads of flavor. It's got a kind of numbing flavor mm. as well which from the clove. Um, but I think also with food, it's, it's, it's a nostalgic memory. You know, it's got to be, it's got to be right. You're with the right people. You're with the right environment. And so it makes the food taste even better, you know. So I think when, when you look back at things you've had, you know that it's uh, everything combined, you know. It's got to be where you are. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes hard to recreate it is. those feelings. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've got jerk chicken at uh, the Culpepper. Um, I try and get jerk in wherever I can. Jerk pork, jerk Do chicken. It. Yeah. yeah, it's bloody good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm so hungry. All right, well, well, speaking of which, let, let's get to the, the travel bug section. So this is where, you know, it's kind of the joys of moaning about your holiday. And, and Stephanie, for you as a foodie, it's one of the difficult things for you because well, you love food really so stressful. much. Yeah. So yeah. if I'm going somewhere new, I want to eat the local food and you know, I want to experience the best meal of my life each time. <laughs> the best. The best. <laughs> and I want to go to the best restaurant, not necessarily the most expensive, but, you know, yeah. the best. And mm -hmm. so I spend a lot of time kind of researching where this best restaurant is. But I, there's so much pressure because how do you know that it's actually the best restaurant? And then mm. when you're there... And I will maybe go to this restaurant and look at it and think, well, maybe may, that looks good, but maybe there's something better. And so I'll keep walking. And this yeah. happened to me in Shanghai. And I was only there for just over 24 hours. And I'd read about the best dumplings in Shanghai. Yeah. yeah. And this, it was a place very close to my hotel, but I didn't have Wi-Fi. I didn't really know where I was. The signs were quite hard to read. So I spent probably about six hours just wandering around trying to find this one restaurant. And I kept walking past these other dumpling restaurants, which looked great too, but <laughs> you had to they go to the weren't one, yeah. the restaurant. <laughs> and, and I never found it. And I ended up in some awful food court eating like oh. just real bad food. And You're not the only one that does that. How, what do you do? Do you have the same uh, pressure or do you just... Yeah, I think we do. And I, and I've, I do the same. I remember doing the same in, in uh, lots of places in Thailand. You'd, you'd walk up the street and you'd, you know, is, is this the best we can get on this street? Um, and y you've just got to go with the gut, you yeah. know, and because pe people will give you advice. Oh, you've got to do this place. You've got to do this place. And sometimes they have a really good experience because the restaurant was on fire that night, you know, pushing out the best food and you'll get there and they'll have the bloody worst night. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, I, it is a lot of pressure. I guess um, going on to TripAdvisor is is a good idea and checking those those restaurants out. Do you find though that most people on TripAdvisor they're like they've 
they're the ones that have had a bad experience that like you don't often read? Oh, sometimes there's some goodies. Okay. Yeah. No, but it, it is funny. TripAdvisor they do turn into food critics, you know. Everyone's mm. a food critic now that they've got the internet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, no. Look, uh, walking up and down the street, we're all guilty of it. Uh, just go with the go with the not the first one, second or third. Okay. The the issue for me and my wife is that so we love walking around, and then when my wife gets hungry, it's in an instant. <laughs> yeah. So she's instantly hungry and hangry and, and hangry. Okay. <laughs> but but then I'm like, but but if we go into this one, it might not be so good. And it, and it's that same thing that we we we've got the pressure to find yeah. the the good place. But, um, but I think I let it get hangers. out of control, though. Like I'll be eating a meal and really enjoying it, but also thinking about <laughs> where else should I be? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. what am I going to eat next? It's quite bad. I, yeah. I think the other thing is, is that the mistake that I've made in the past, because I love finding things on foot, I always assume I will find the good restaurant on foot. Mm. And and Singapore, which is which is such a, a great food destination, but. I didn't do the research. And so in Singapore, you don't do the research. You stumble across expensive, bland places. And if you do the research, you discover, oh, it was down that street, but hidden mm. behind that place that yeah. I would have got the amazing meal. Yeah, Singapore's a funny one. I was there just recently, actually stopping on the way back from the UK. And um, I was lucky enough to have a friend of mine. He has a, he has a couple of restaurants in Singapore. And They're always handy yeah. friends to have. <laughs> yeah, he's got a place called The Cure, um, Cure Singapore. And... Um, if I didn't know it was there, you you wouldn't walk you wouldn't walk past it. You know, no. it was done, kind of down a back street and a beautiful food. Really lucky to um, to go there. I used to work with him in London, and me and my wife went there, and um, it was just insane. He had like nine courses of this beautiful food, and um, all I paid for was the wine. It was just magical. It's yeah, it's always better yeah. when it's free as well, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it tastes much better. Tastes way. way better. Yeah. 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 But it's true. You needed that knowledge. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, and I find always asking um, locals where mm. the best place to go to is, which I did in Thailand quite a bit. Um, always ask, you know, where should I go to get true Thai food? Yeah. And um, I remember going to this place and thinking, we're going to get food poisoning here, <laughs> but um, we didn't, and it was absolutely delicious. Yeah. Really spicy, which is how I like it. But yeah. um, it's authentic. I think that's what you're you're after, right? You're after the the most authentic experience when in these different countries. Yeah, I don't want I don't want people to look at me and go, "Well, she's a tourist, so she's gonna she's not gonna want anything spicy. She's gonna want it. She needs chips, you know. Like I want yeah. I want the real food. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and sometimes I'll order it. Like I won't even know what it is, but if it's like a local delicacy or something, I'll try that. What's the strangest thing you've ever eaten? Oh, I'm a I'm a bit of a pussy when it comes yeah. to that. Yeah, I, I um. <clears throat> Um, there was a there was a sausage that I got from France uh, that was brought over. Oh dear! Uh, yeah, it was it was a white <laughs> sausage. And I can't remember the name of it, but I know that it was just anything but the good stuff okay. in the sausage. <laughs> and it, I was actually dry reached. Um, um, uh, yeah, I'm not really that okay. adventurous when it comes to that's interesting putting myself out there because yeah. I know there's so many good things to eat. Mm. Yeah. So I mean, in, even with like offal. I, I love cooking offal. I love uh, some offal, but there's something that I, I won't eat brains. I, I haven't. I just have you tried it and you don't like no, it, or you just I haven't tried it. I don't okay. want to. Okay. I, no, I think you. You, you know, there's so many good what things. About tripe? What's the deal with tripe? Why, why, why are there still Again, tripe and I'm, onions clubs? <laughs> and why do the onions get mentioned in the clubs? I've never understood. Anyway, but there are still in New Zealand people are members. People listening to this podcast may be members of tripe and onions clubs. Really? Oh, I've and never I, heard of that before. Yeah, that's a. It's I've done talk back on it, and as soon as you mention it, boom, people are ringing through tripe and onions. They love it. But um, <laughs> how are people that passionate about it? I mean, they love geez. it. They join a club. <laughs> <laughs> where, yeah. where are you at with tripe? Because apparently uh, it's made a comeback. It's kind of yeah, semi trendy again. Yeah, again, I, I'm, I'm not a uh, that honeycomb tripe. I'm I'm not a fan of. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd certainly give it a go. I have I've had tripe and uh, we had it in a Michelin star restaurant and it was um, it was delicious. But it's not something that I'm going to rush to. Mm. You know, when there's so many delicious cuts that are good, even the secondary cuts like. You know, a cheek and belly and tail and, mm. and, and, and things like that. But um, yeah, not, not the intestines and stuff. <laughs> not so much. Although I love haggis. I love haggis. Oh, really? You know, haggis is beautiful. Yeah. 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 What's the most kind of outrageously luxurious um, restaurant you've ever been to? Oh, um, I, I did. I was lucky enough to go to Eleven Madison in, oh, wow. um, in New York. Yeah. Uh, and, and that was part of a, uh, a food trip and it was at the end of my trip so I was really nervous going there not 
not because of um, how I'd feel, but I was so full. <laughs> when you're eating nonstop for three days, it's you, all you want to do is have salad, right? So oh. I went to Never Madison. <laughs> Take me longer than that to get sick of eating <laughs> oh, food. <laughs> I swear it's hard. It's, people go, oh, it's so difficult going on holiday and eating. But it's actually quite tough. Yeah. So I went to Eleven Madison, one of my favorite restaurants, and um, that was that was extravagant. That was beautiful. That's one of the world's like top restaurants, isn't it's, it? Yeah, it's been yeah. voted number one, yeah. yeah. Um, Key in, in, in Mel, uh, sorry, Sydney. Mm-hmm. Um, that was, uh, that was one of my top food experiences, I have to say. Um, apart from that, really Claridge's, I, I worked at Claridge's in Mayfair. Um, and that is, you know, that is just a supreme hotel. Uh, I took my mum there for, um, for Mother's Day for, um, afternoon tea. Oh, nice. And I tell you what, I, I, she, I stopped her from being a vegetarian. She actually converted to eating meat <laughs> wow. that day. She just couldn't get past the ham sandwiches. <laughs> and boom, in. Back in the game. Back on the horse. That. Yeah. Wow. yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, having kids now, you, you don't really go for extravagance. You kind of go for kid-friendly restaurants. So. Are your kids adventurous eaters? Um, they are, actually. Certainly my youngest. Yeah, they'll give anything a crack. I remember giving my eldest caviar. Uh, when he was about three, that didn't last long in his mouth. That came straight out. <laughs> um, but they've eaten oysters just recently. They'll they'll keep trying stuff. Yeah. Which 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 That's I all you can which ask yeah for, really. exactly. Yeah. Um, they don't. They're not. Um, my youngest loves fish. My eldest hates fish. You know. So no, they're they're pretty good though. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, did you want to sneak in another another foodie question? Because I don't um, want to deprive yeah, you, you. Of, um, um, of foodie I questions. Think just, do you have like one rule? Like when you're traveling, like. Like I think mine is I won't go somewhere where the rest the menu is laminated and there's pictures oh, of the food. <laughs> but like, that's, like isn't that a classic sign of like a, a tourist restaurant when they've yeah. got a picture of and it's got like a fried egg and chips on it? And, yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you're saying. Yeah, but sometimes you, that's all you can get. But I, I guess being a chef, I do look at um, their hygiene certificate mm. level that's probably more important and than whether your menu's laminated <laughs> no, i like it? the laminated menu rule that's a good one yeah I, I, was, <laughs> I was in canada i was in vancouver and um we went to this uh, yum chow place my parent my dad and his wife took me to and um my son looked up and saw that it was a, a b-grade he wouldn't eat a thing <laughs> wouldn't eat a thing <laughs> so, food critic, yeah, yeah yeah it's terrible but um no, I, I guess i don't really have any rules now okay. i just give it a go all right, maybe I just need to get over myself. Yeah, no, the laminated one. I've never thought about that, mm. but it, it's it's gonna it's gonna stay in the mind. Okay. Let's get to our destination of the week, which we touched on a, a tiny bit at the start. And uh, England is it? Yeah. And so many Kiwis uh, have the connection to England for various reasons, including uh, doing the OE there. Um, and Stephanie, this is where you originally hail that's from. That's right. I know my accent doesn't quite sound like it anymore, but yes, that's Just, where I grew up as yeah, well. Yeah, little hints of it. So, I mean, if, if someone listening to this has never been to England and you were going to give them a, a recommendation, you know, you're going there, okay, you must do this. Oh, that's, oh, tough. that's tough. Yeah. That's tough. This time, I mean, I think you've got to go to London, but London is, shouldn't be the only place you go to in England. Like London's incredible. There's so much there. There's so much history. There's so much to do. There's so much amazing food, mm. such diversity of people and, and just, yeah, it's, it's amazing. But then the rest of England, you can't judge the rest of England on London, I think. No, no. Uh, there's so many, so diverse. Going up north and down south, down the west country and, and you know, uh, even up towards really high, right, right up the top of north. Um, the, the food's so different. Um, London, you've got a kind of combination of everything, uh, but you've also got that influence from, uh, I mean, Turkey and, and uh, the Middle East up mm. in uh, North London. Mm-hmm. Um, east, you've got more kind of African and, and stuff, so, and South, again, African. If you go you know, Brixton, uh, Brixton Market, um, some amazing food, you know? I used to go to a place called Dalston and, um, I used to hack over there. I was, I was grew up, well, didn't grow up, but I lived in the East more than anywhere else. And um, I'd go and get my Jamaican beef patties there. So good. You know, <laughs> I'd buy two or three, couple in the pockets and ch- <laughs> chomp on one. Um, and then, but you got Brick Lane as well, you know, Indian food, or they're actually Bangladeshi owned. But uh, that Indian cuisine on Brick Lane is just incredible. Mm. And, and finish it off with. Um, a salt beef bagel from the bagel shop that's a 24-hour bagel shop and 
it's always at its best at one o'clock in the morning where you, you've had a few jars and <laughs> you ordered a bigger, they stuff it with salt beef that they carve in front of you, uh, hot English mustard, and it's just so good. So yeah. that would be my recommendation, okay. go get a salt beef bagel from Brick Lane yeah. after a few pints. Okay, good. And what about like non-foodie recommendations <clears throat> for England? Like um, what are some of your favourite places to explore? England, um, well, can I include Wales in that or no? I mean, technically, we're talking about England. Yeah, right, we can so do. Well, you'll have to come back, and we'll talk about Wales on another <laughs> yeah. podcast. Yeah. Okay. 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 <laughs> done. Um, look, England. I would. Uh, the the Lake District is is mm. absolutely stunning, uh, and around um, around that area, there's some beautiful history. I mean, you you go through some of the little villages where last of the summer wine was filmed. Yeah. Uh, and it just hasn't changed in in years, and I think. It was really incredible to go there with the kids and show them that history and yeah. you know there's houses there from the 1600s uh, and it's just it's just nuts yeah, yeah and well you go into a pub that's from the, oh, the 1600s I know. 1700s yeah. I love the pubs and, there. and then from new zealand that sort of history blows your mind mm. I, I think i think for a lot of kiwis when you haven't been to england you know i mentioned at the start so you got 55 million people in a place which is which is roughly the same size as, as both the north and the south island it's about the same size and so it's hard to imagine that there is countryside you know <laughs> how, how could there possibly be countryside yeah. if we've only got five million people and and there are 55 there but the the countryside is so beautiful in those old mm. towns it just going through oxford and looking at the the historic architecture the same in cambridge and yeah so um, i spent five gardens. years living in cambridge oh did and, you yeah, really I, and i went back wow. there recently yeah. um i've still got my best friend still lives there yeah um and it yeah it felt like going home even though i haven't mm. lived there for 16 years but it's just so beautiful yeah. the universities yeah. are just incredible my mom lived in uh, ely Oh, that's where uh, my mum lives. Really? Oh, shout oh, out. Funny, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Not like friends, they might be friends. It's Probably. One of, it's one of the smallest cities in, because um, it's a city all in itself because of the cathedral. Mm. Uh, and it's just so beautiful. I know. And do you know, I, my mum's lived there for a long time now and I, had never set foot into the cathedral till recently and I went in there and it is stunning. stunning. It's yeah. like 12th century. Yeah. The ceiling is, oh, it's just, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think that's another thing that, that for Kiwis who maybe, you know, we're quite a secular society and don't go into churches in New Zealand, um, but then you go to a place like England and and even if you're not religious, that you can go into those cathedrals and just be, oh, you know, 100%. so inspired. Mm, yeah. yeah. We, I did a Christmas there once and um, just me and my, my wife, uh, we weren't married at the time, but it was our first Christmas together and um, we just to the local pubs, you know, did a bit of a crawl and ended up in the cathedral and just because it was Christmas Eve and, you know, there's a choir singing. We didn't last long there because we were giggling too much. And <laughs> so we, we got out, we left. But it was just a, it was just an experience. It was just, yeah. 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 There's so many places like that in, mm. in England. Yeah. Um, Westminster Abbey in London. Yeah. Like, yeah. There's yeah. so many yeah. famous people are buried. Yeah. And, yeah. and then there's, there are some uh, people kind of take the piss a bit out of beaches in the UK but if you go down to Cornwall oh, the beaches down there are just incredible yeah. Yeah. yeah and then the cliffs the mm, uh, white cliffs, cliffs of Dover, cliffs of Dover. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah I'm starting to feel a bit patriotic oh huh? no feeling homesick <laughs> <laughs> do you think you would ever go back and live no. there no, no that, was a, that was that was really definite. quick no yeah, yeah when you first quick. arrived and you were looking out your hotel window you thought you probably would oh I, I wasn't sure yeah. you know it was first time moving out here and um, I wasn't married then, um, but then I just fell in love with New Zealand. I think I was already in love with it before I came yeah. anyway, because I'd met so many really cool Kiwis in London, uh, and that kind of made me want to come over. And uh, yeah, I definitely wouldn't go back. Uh, I'm not going to make. I'm not going to mention Brexit. But <laughs> you yeah. just did. Just did. <laughs> well, that's all we've got time for. Oh. We, can we? Can we ever see you at some of your restaurants? Um, yeah, I, mean, I usually park park up at Euro. Okay. Um, but I'm uh, Andy Armo is one of my favourites. Um, it's favourite cuisine being it's Italy, Italian to cook. Um, so I'm kind of hanging around there as well. So yeah, yeah. I'm always around. Yeah. Okay. And people should check out your new one, The Brit. The Brit. Down yeah, at the Brit down Mart. Down yeah. 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 Well, the, and this is a refit out of, uh, of the old Northern steamship. Is that right? Yeah. And, yeah. So it, it, it looks amazing. Oh, so it's done such a good job. You had a yeah. lot of lampshades to get rid of though. Oh, yeah. They <laughs> were bashed down. The Northern steamship had more lampshades. It was yeah. just. It was good in its time. Yeah. Yeah. But it, but it needed a, a, needed a lift. Mm. It needed a lot, to freshen up. Yeah. A lot of lampshades. Yeah. But, <laughs> hey, well, great to have you on the show. Yeah, thank Thanks. you so Thanks much. Me. You've yeah. made me very hungry. Yeah. I'm going to go and find some jerk chicken now. <laughs> Great. <laughs> All right. Thank you.